Hello friends, Dr. David Katz with another COVID reality check. This one entitled, When Will the Pandemic End? And inevitably, this may get cataloged as a prediction. I don't really want to be that bold. I'm not making a prediction. I'm actually looking at what's already happening in the world, interpreting it, and extrapolating. So I'll return to that in just a second. But first, I want to note that in medical training, there's a lot of macabre humor. And I apologize for that, but maybe it's understandable. We are surrounded by blood and guts and death, and macabre humor is one of the defenses against all of that. And in the mix there are statements like, all bleeding stops, all crying stops, all pain stops. And of course, these things are true. And, and what we mean is one way or another. And sometimes the end is good, sometimes the end is not so good. Uh, we could append to that list all pandemics. And, and, and in doing that, we can note that one way or another, the pandemic in the United States and globally will end, but it won't necessarily end with us having achieved the best approach to total harm minimization. It won't necessarily end with us having saved the most lives. And, and, and I'm about to offer what I think is good news based on interpreting global events to date. Uh, but I do want to temper that with the fact that, yeah, sure, the pandemic in the United States will come to an end, but we will have lost many more lives than we needed to. We could have done risk stratified interdiction. We could have meticulously protected our nursing homes. Uh, we could have opened up in a phased response uh, that protected people who were vulnerable. Uh, we could have had more effective national leadership that gave us clear messaging and a, a sequence of steps to move through. And we didn't have any of that. Uh, in spite of all of that, the pandemic will end, and I think it will end soon. So uh, here's the story. I, I basically think we have opened up uh, haphazardly in the United States and exposed a lot of people. Uh, and so we have high case counts around the country. But essentially, that means that those parts of the country that weren't previously exposed are following in the footsteps of New York City, uh, which closed down too late to prevent spread, and northern Italy, which did the same. And if we look at those places that had widespread exposure somewhat inadvertently, there was a couple of weeks of lead time before case counts started to peak, hospitals started to fill up. There was a really bad sequence of weeks, maybe a month or so, and then a couple of weeks going down the curve to get to lower case counts. And if you look at a, a COVID map of the United States now, you see that the transmission rates in New York State, New York City are extremely low. It's true for much of the Northeast. Uh, Northern Italy seems to have this crisis in their rearview mirror at this point. So we paid a much higher price than we should have, but it appears to be mostly over in these locations. And accordingly, I think the pandemic in the United States will effectively be over in about six weeks. I'm recording this on August 13th, so middle of August. So essentially what this means is buyer before October 1st. We will be through this. And I can't say for sure whether or not there'll be a second wave. Nobody can, but I don't see why there would be. First, it's increasingly clear that there was a high level of partial native resistance to SARS-CoV-2 based on exposure to other coronaviruses, in particular common cold coronaviruses. So much of the population had partial resistance before we were exposed to this particular bug, but now much of the population has been exposed to this particular bug, so many more of us have at least partial immunity than before. The other reason why I'm not very concerned about a significant second wave is typically with pandemics, when there are waves like that, they're seasonal. So there's a decline in viral circulation and transmission during summer months, and then the virus comes back in the fall. Well, we're in the middle of the summer, and there's been no decline in SARS-CoV-2. So this is a germ that's obviously happy to work through the summer, but something that never goes away in the first place can't come back 
And so, you know, this one extended wave looks to me like all there is. So uh, I think we are well on our way toward herd immunity, at least partial immunity. I think that we are essentially watching the whole country experience what happened in certain locations, notably New York City, uh, and for that matter, Northern Italy. And I think the timelines there likely extrapolate to the timelines for the nation as a whole. The pandemic, per se, the global experience won't be over in six weeks because other countries around the world got a later start than we did. But I believe that in the United States, by or before October 1st, the pandemic will have receded into the background noise of epidemiology, uh, and we will start to be looking back at the historical experience of the COVID pandemic.